This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 53. Relax in a minute, 10 steps to instant calm. An excerpt by Tony Wrighton of TonyWrighton.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hello and welcome to Optimal Living Daily or the old podcast. I'm Justin Mollick and I have another guest author for you today. And this is a new thing for the show. I'm actually going to be reading to you an excerpt from a book. I got my hands on this book from the publisher and I didn't think it'd be possible or make sense to read any of it for you on the show. But after I read the first chapter, I was like, this is perfect. So I got permission to read pretty much the first chapter to you. The book is very applicable for my own life, so I thought it'd be for you too, and it includes some super quick and easy strategies based on neuro-linguistic programming that you can take to calm down in minutes. So if you're looking for ways to calm down in anxious situations or emotional turmoil or what have you, you can definitely benefit from today's reading. And a little bit about the author real quick, Tony Wrighton is an NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming, a Master Practitioner and Trainer having sold over 100,000 copies of his self-development audiobooks. And he's a TV and radio presenter. He also has a podcast, and that's called Zestology, which is all about living with zest and purpose. And that includes some great guests and inspiring people from all over the world. And you can also check out his site and blog at TonyWrighton.com. There will be a link in the episode description and on oldpodcast.com. And I think that covers the intro. So let's just dive right into chapter one and start optimizing your life. Relax in a minute, 10 steps to instant calm, an excerpt by Tony Wrighton of TonyWrighton.com. This chapter is solely designed to enable you to relax quickly in situations that stress you out. The spot starts working instantly. It is effective because at some point in your past, you have felt relaxed. So we're going to use that memory to help you start to feel more relaxed now. The float. Are you stressed, uptight, or nervous? Do you fancy the idea of feeling the light, relaxing sensation of floating around the room? The float is adapted from an ancient relaxation ritual. Bounce. Are you feeling bouncy? This is another instant technique to use before a stressful situation. Notice how you start to change the way you see yourself. The spot. There was a famous sportsman who won the biggest tournament in his sport. Throughout the four days of competition, he had drawn a small spot on his clothing. Eventually, the TV cameras picked up on it, and after he'd won, journalists asked him about this strange red spot. It turned out he'd been working with a brilliant sports psychologist called Carl Morris to help his concentration levels. Dr. Morris had worked out that by placing a colored spot somewhere where he could see it often, he could get the sportsman to remind himself of what he was supposed to do at certain key moments. Every time he looked at the spot, it made him feel a certain way. So, are you ready to give it a go? Linking thoughts and emotions to colors is something I've been using for years and I've found hugely effective. It works by making use of the amazing way that the brain links a visual stimulus to a thought. You must follow the specific instructions below though, or it doesn't work. First, pick the color you'd like to use. Your options are blue, the color of the ocean and the sky, and generally associated with calm and peacefulness. Green, the color of nature and calming and easy on the eye. Hospitals often paint walls like green because it relaxes patients. I've tried a number of other colors over the years, but generally blue and green seem to work the best. Other colors have different associations. Yellow, for example, can be associated with a speeding of the metabolism, not really ideal when you're trying to achieve a state of relaxation. And red isn't ideal either. It is the most emotionally intense color and one associated with, among other things, danger. You might ask why the sports psychologist worked with a red spot rather than a blue one. Well, Dr. Morris asked the sportsman what the color was that he associated with focusing and keeping his concentration. He said red. Simple as that. As we're going for relaxation, not focus, I'd recommend blue and green as a great starting point, but by all means, try different colors if you want. These colored spots become even more powerful when used alongside sophisticated memory association techniques to help you feel calm. Here's what you need to do. Number one, get some colored spot stickers in your chosen color. If you don't have any colored stickers handy, just find a scrap of paper in your chosen color until you can get some proper stickers. Number two, stick one somewhere you'll see it often, but not constantly. 
Number three, once you've placed your colored spot, think of a specific time when you felt deeply relaxed. It might be lying by the pool on a holiday, slouching in a comfy chair, watching TV, any time when you felt relaxed. Think of that time now as you look at the spot. Associate it as closely as you can with the memory, hearing what you heard at the time and making the sounds clear and crisp, seeing exactly what you saw and making the colors vivid as you continue to look at your spot and remember how relaxed you felt. One minute. Number four. Now notice how you feel more relaxed whenever you happen to look at the spot. Want to add some extra emotions onto the spot? Come up with some other ways that you like to feel, such as calm, controlled, or happy. Follow the same memory process, watching your spot for a full minute each time. Number five, only leave the spot there for 24 hours. After this, either change the color or remove it and put a new colored spot somewhere else. This works effectively as long as you absolutely load up the spot with your desired emotion. I've been using a colored spot on my phone. I just glanced down at it while writing this and had an unexpectedly vivid flashback to my recent relaxing holiday in Thailand. But I found the usefulness of the spot starts to diminish over time. That's why the best time to use it is over a 24-hour period. After that, it's better to change the color or the position of the spot and load the feelings on again. Hint, great places to put the spot. Your mobile phone, front or back, computer screen, wallet, a bathroom mirror, the fridge, your keys or key ring, the cover of this book. In other words, choose anything that you look at quite often during the day. The float. What makes this different from many other relaxation techniques is that you do it while you're walking. The principles behind walking meditation have been around in various forms for thousands of years, and they're more relevant than ever because of the crazy number of distractions that we face in modern life. So why did I call this the float? Well, this technique combines the principles of walking meditation with deep breathing and a special rhythm that calms the mind and body down. I find the result is a strange feeling of slowly floating as I walk. See if you agree. Number one, start breathing slowly in for four counts and then slowly out for four counts. Count in your mind as you breathe. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. One minute. Number two, now lightly tap your thumb on each finger of your hand, starting on your index finger and working outwards to your little finger. Get a repetition going as you say, in, two, three, four. Going from your index finger and tapping outwards, And then as you say, out, two, three, four. Again, tapping from your index finger outwards. One minute. Number three, now combine the breathing, the counting, and the tapping. One minute. Number four, for the final minute, slowly walk around the room while breathing, counting, and tapping. For an even more effective rhythm, make sure each step coincides with the numbers and the thumb taps. You'll find this slows down the tapping, which is good. One minute. Okay, here's a question. Are you finding it quite hard to combine everything at once? Good. It should take your full attention for the minute. If you find you have time to think about your shopping list as well as breathing, counting, tapping, and walking, you may not be doing it properly. If you find you're breathing too quickly, slow your steps down so you can slow your breathing down. This, I find, one of the most effective parts of the float. It forces me to walk slower. With such a focused yet clear mind, it feels like floating. This is adapted from an ancient yoga routine called Kirtan Kriya. It suggests that you should chant Sa, Ta, Na, Ma instead of counting. These are believed to be primal sounds that can provide us with emotional balance. Kirtan Kriya requires a longer time period to practice and the instructions must be followed exactly. So I'll leave you to do your own research if you'd like to do a longer, more exact routine. One more thing, interruptions are okay on your walk. I decided to do the float on the way to the shops today and within 10 seconds of leaving the house, I bumped into a friend. You'll be pleased to know that I didn't just stand there in front of her gazing vacantly and silently tapping my fingers. That might have looked a bit weird. If you bump into somebody you know or are interrupted, put your minute-long meditation on hold. That's fine. Just accept it and be sure to go for the full minute when you start again. I find this a powerful way to relax and change the way I feel. Sometimes I find it so relaxing that I want to lie down and have a nap afterwards. When I do it outside, I am also amazed at how much more aware I am of my surroundings than usual. I normally end up walking really slowly and calmly. It has that effect. Start to use the float daily as part of your relax routine. Once you get used to this, you can start to incorporate floating into your everyday life. Float to the shops, float to the train station, float wherever you like. Bounce. 
Lucy had a terror of public speaking. This was an immediate problem as she was at a conference in Kuala Lumpur, and that afternoon she was speaking to over 50 delegates. As she sat there, she thought about how she always blushed when she was nervous, and how even at school her teacher used to tell her to stand up straight in front of the class and speak up. Thanks, Mr. Morgan. Bounce is good for managing how you react to stressful thoughts and situations. Are you stressed? Do you want to relax right now? Let's bounce you into a different state. Number one, you need to work out what different positive bouncy state you would like to bounce yourself into. How would you like to feel? Make an image of how that would look in your mind. Make it big and bright and put yourself in the picture so that you very clearly see how positive things look when you feel this way. Number two, Briefly make an image in your mind of how you look when you're stressed out or anxious. For some people, this can be distressing, so make the picture black and white and quite grainy so it's hard to see. Make any sounds muffled and quiet. Number three, put your different bouncy state right in the corner of this stressed out image. Make it the size of a tiny little bouncy ball in the corner of the image. Number four, when you're ready, Bounce your positive state so that it grows really big, comes much closer, and completely covers the old unwanted picture. As you do it, say bounce. The unwanted picture melts away into the background. Now look at your huge bouncy state in front of you. Bright colors, clear, great sounds, and good feelings. Number five, now clear your mind. Think about something entirely different, such as what you'll have for dinner tonight. This bit is important. Number six, Go through steps one to five again. Bounce at least five or six times again over the course of a full minute with exactly the same process until you have problems seeing the unwanted image and you can't feel those unpleasant thoughts anymore. Bounce more quickly each time you go. One minute. By the way, exclaiming bounce in a crowded coffee shop is a fairly guaranteed way to get attention. So if you're somewhere busy, you could do the bounce bit silently. When Lucy bounced, what she was chuffed about was how it instantly stopped her from blushing so much. She said, quote, I just find that I'm thinking less about blushing. That makes me feel less anxious, and so I blush less and think more about how I'd like to appear and feel, end quote. That's it. One of the effective things about bounce is that it works differently for everybody. It is your own individual technique. You simply pick how you'd like to feel and bounce into it. However busy you are, you can hopefully always find at least one minute to squeeze in a moment of relaxation. You just listened to an excerpt from Relax in a Minute, 10 Steps to Instant Calm by Tony Wrighton of TonyWrighton.com. It's funny because I have a new author on the show tomorrow for Wellness Wednesday. I actually finally got a fitness expert to join the regular authors on the old podcast, so I'm really excited about that. But what's funny is that the new author has his own podcast too, and I submitted a question about this exact thing. I asked him if he has any tips for calming the nerves, especially for people like me who have terrible performance anxiety or social anxiety. So kind of funny that here enters Tony Wrighton with some actionable tips. Pretty cool. Again, you can check him out online at TonyWrighton.com, and from there you can learn more about this book and Zestology. And last, everything I'm doing here is free for you, so... If you'd like to support the show, one really easy way you can show me that you like what I'm doing and the service I'm providing is to simply subscribe to the show. It's that easy. In your podcast app, there should be a subscribe button and just click it. It'll make me really happy and that's how I know that you find this podcast valuable. And that's episode 53. I'll see you in tomorrow's first Wellness Wednesday show where your optimal life awaits. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.